How's it going everybody? My name is Ben from the Ben and Bev channel and today we're going to be talking about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 5 truth. If you've not seen the other episodes of Falcon Winter Soldier up until this point I would turn back as the spoilers could be quite spicy. So we start off the episode with John Walker running away from the scene of the crime and Bucky and Sam interacting with him and trying to get him to give up the shield. It goes about how you think it's going to go. John Walker doesn't like that very much. He has a very talking through his teeth demeanor the entire conversation before it explodes into an outright fight. And this fight ends up being one of the best ones we've seen so far in the series, showing the lengths that Sam and Bucky have to go to just to overpower John Walker. While he is a super soldier, something about his emotion gives him a different drive, where every time they get close to taking the shield from him, the angrier he gets, the better he gets with combat. And it also shows how far he's willing to go, as there's a few times where it looks like he's pretty close to executing Sam in a similar fashion as he did the Flag Smasher at the end of last week's episode. They did a really good job in this fight scene of showing the stakes and having Sam very narrowly escape some of John Walker's blows, whether it be from an assist by Bucky or just throwing up a wing. And it really felt like they got out of there by the skin of their teeth. So from this point on, all of our heroes are benched due to John Walker's actions, and the episode starts to take a very dialogue-heavy turn. We get to see scenes with Zemo and Bucky resolving their conflict, including the one of Bucky holding the gun to Zemo's head that was in the trailer. We get to see how that resolves, and that was a really nice scene. We also get to see Isaiah Bradley again, and a combo he has with Falcon that's very meaningful to what the shield means and what legacy that really holds to Sam Wilson as well as another group of Americans that previously hasn't really been shown to us before and we get to see Bucky's perception, we get to see really everyone's perception of what their duty is and what their position is when it comes to that shield and this country and what it means to them. Whether you're John Walker and you feel as if you've been bred for this by the country your whole life and have now been betrayed after doing what it is that you feel is right, or as Isaiah who did everything he was supposed to and was treated so horribly for that just because he was a success when it came to his experimentation. It's a really heavy episode and they handled it really well up until we get to Louisiana and I'm not hating on that side of the story. I was actually really enjoying the scenes of Bucky and Falcon fixing up the boat and kind of discussing the shield and where they think it'll end up and the weight of it. It's just, once we get to that part of the episode, the dialogue gets a little clunkier and it starts to slow down a bit. And while the episode is 10 minutes longer, I struggle to figure out why exactly that is. For them to knock the first half of it out of the park, but then to make the last 20 minutes feel longer than it should, is just kind of weird. I don't know if it was just the issues with COVID and getting things done on the cutting room floor or what exactly it was, but something about this episode's last half just feels very different from the first half tonally. The opening fight scene between John Walker, Bucky, and Falcon is absolutely killer. It has some parallels to Thanos when they're trying to take that Captain America shield off of him. You got both of the guys struggling just to get it off. It ends with Falcon breaking his arm using the jet while Bucky holds him in place. That's what it takes to get the shield off the guy. Every time he gets emotional, he just gets more amped up. And I also noticed the camera work here is really nice. Every time the shield covered in blood shifts between a character, the camera focuses a little bit on the shield. It's also super insane to see those wings get ripped off of Falcon's suit. I mean, John Walker just tore them off of there just to look on Anthony Mackie's face as that shield was getting brought over his head. He was just like, oh boy, I was hoping not to be on the other side of this shield today. Why Russell is playing John Walker so tragic in this episode too. The, the scene of him at the courthouse and briefly with the GRC agent afterwards, you really get the sense of loss, tragedy, and just how badly they set him up for failure and how now it's fully his responsibility and while his actions were his own and he did do the horrible things he did i think that the government should take some of the blame since it was under their direction that he did these things they continue with the theme of political corruption as we get a scene of sam going to visit isaiah again and while it seemed like he was trying to present isaiah with the shield it really just felt like more he was going there for advice and you get the very different perspective from isaiah on what that shield means and 
how much he despises it because of what this country did to him after he did so much for them. In return, they basically just tortured him and used his body parts for testing. And while it was briefly alluded to earlier in the series, to see Carl Lum Lumley absolutely nail this scene and just the way he talks about it and the amount of emotion in his eyes and everything. You really feel the dialogue heavy episode. You, you feel it. You are super excited for all of the other things that you're going to learn in the last half of the episode. But it's kind of just clunky. I, I hate to admit that, but this last half of the episode where everyone gets back to the U.S., we got Sam heading to Louisiana to fix the boat. Bucky joins him there shortly with this new package from Wakanda, which we don't even get to see before the end of the episode. Uh. Just something about when they get to Louisiana, I really liked that it showed a bonding moment with Sam and Bucky doing something human. It showed them kind of go over Bucky's list and how he's really just avenging and not really amending. Just the dialogue just didn't hit the way I thought it would. It was very clunky, almost how the combo was in the first episode between Don Cheadle and Sam when discussing the shield. Just something about it seems like maybe they should have taken another take of it or it just seemed very choppy. And while it was exciting to see Sam kind of come into his own with the shield and what he intends to do with it, I felt like it should have been handled on the same pedestal as they did with the first half of the episode. That would be the one thing that keeps this episode from being the best, is that that last part just felt so different tonally. It was such a big shift. And it also kind of felt like they were just pushing the conflict into that last and final episode. So this week's episode caught me off guard with how dialogue heavy it was. It was setting up to become one of my favorite episodes for that reason though, with The Longest Night being my one of my favorite Game of Thrones episodes. I really enjoy good convos about subjects, different viewpoints and perceptions from our main characters. Only issue is, the last third or half of the episode, it kinda doesn't hit as well as it should. And while there are still huge character moments in those last 20 minutes, as well as in a mid credit scene, don't forget the mid credit scene. Don't forget the mid credit scene. It totally doesn't land nearly as impactful as the previous episode did. Still really excited for next week's finale, and I think we still have a really good track record for this season. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Did you guys like this week's episode? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. Ben and Bev out.